British MPs on the Business and Trade Committee are calling for the government to allow lawmakers to debate and vote on the UK's accession to the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, the CPTPP, partly due to environmental worries. Last year, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak announced the UK's intention to join the CPTPP after two years of negotiations, marking it as the country's most significant post-Brexit trade deal yet. The agreement is expected to facilitate increased trading opportunities with nations such as Australia, Japan and Mexico across various industries including food and drink, automotive services and technology. British ministers claim that the deal will yield an additional £1.8 billion in income for the UK over the next decade, supplementing revenue from existing bilateral trade agreements with some of the members. However, MPs argue that estimating the benefits of CPTPP and its impact on economic growth remains challenging, particularly as Business and Trade Secretary Kemi Badnock distanced herself from economic modeling produced by her own civil servants. Business and Trade Committee's Chair Liam Byrne said about this, Today, the government's target of covering 80% of trade with free trade agreements is beyond reach and we are off track to meet the target of £1 trillion of exports by 2030. That is why CPTPP is important, but for all its merits or drawbacks, if we are serious about parliamentary sovereignty, government must let MPs debate the deal and vote on it. We need some hard-headed analysis of the economic benefits of the trade deals ministers propose to science. It is simply not good enough for secretaries of state to cast aside numbers produced by their own department without providing their own figures. Moreover, the MPs are also urging for a parliamentary vote due to the controversial environmental and ethical aspects of joining the trade bloc. Concerns are high about the potential impact on UK safeguards regarding imports of controversial agri-food products such as beef and pork treated with growth promoters, agri-food produced using pesticides banned in the UK and palm oil linked to deforestation. The Trade and Agriculture Commission has warned of potential increased imports of such products due to tariff reductions under the CPTPP, presenting a cost advantage over UK producers who are legally held to higher sustainability standards. Moreover, contentious provisions within the agreement allowing foreign investors to sue governments over actions affecting their profits have raised alarms about the UK government's regulatory autonomy, particularly concerning the English water industry. Worker rights implications also raise red flags, with concerns raised by the Trade Union Congress regarding trade with nations like Malaysia, where evidence of forced labor exists, and Vietnam, where workers' rights to unionize are restricted. In response to these concerns, the Business and Trade Committee is urging a debate and vote on the trade deal during the 21-day scrutiny period under the Constitutional Reform and Governance Act 2010. It is also calling for a revised impact assessment from the government outlining the expected gains from CPTPP membership and for clarity on measures to ensure UK businesses fully optimize the treaty's benefits. And you know these benefits. No? Brexit has brought no benefits and instead may cause terminal damage to the UK's mu music industry as well. That's at least what the principal of a leading school has said. Professor Jonathan Freeman Atwood, the principal of the Royal Academy of Music, said the proportion of European students at the London Academy had fallen by half since 2016 and warned that Brexit has stopped the flow of talent coming in. In an interview with the European Movement UK campaign group, Freeman Atwood said, It has been a complete no-win situation, not just for higher education, but actually for music higher education, and particularly an institution like this was founded over 200 years ago by Europeans. The whole idea of boundaries and not being able to travel and not being able to collaborate with people from different countries 
is, is totally alien to the concept of being a professional musician, he said. Asked if there were benefits to Brexit, he said, the benefits? There are no benefits. There's nothing there. There are no winners. And he said, I think there will be a terminal damage in an area where we have a world-renowned reputation as educators and as people who make a difference worldwide in the creative industries. So at the moment, I think we are fighting against the tide and in some areas we are doing okay. But it's a colossal waste in terms of reputation, in terms of capability, in terms of possibility of things that Britain has always done incredibly well. So it's such a multidimensional, multifaceted potential damage of which a lot of damage is being done daily. The Royal Academy of Music counts stars such as Annie Lennox and Elton John among its past students. It was founded in 1822 by French harpist Nicolas Charles Bourchard, or Bochsa, and British aristocrat John Fain. The warning from the school's principal comes after concerns that the Tory government is looking to crack down on artistic freedoms. Fears of uh, so-called McCarthyism 2.0 were raised after the UK government blocked funding for an Irish band due to the anti-unionist views. And once again, Cammy Badenoch is embroiled in another political row after Canada refuted her claim she was engaging with them on trade talks. The country's High Commissioner to the UK, Ralph Goodale, has told MPs that no discussions of any kind are happening. The intervention risks inflaming tensions after Ms. Badenoch paused negotiations with Canada on a new free agreement last month amid a standoff over beef and cheese. It comes as she is embroiled in a separate spat with the ousted chairman of the post office over his claims that he was told to stall compensation payments for victims of the Horizon scandal, which she denies. Despite pausing the trade negotiations with Canada, Ms. Badenoch went on to tell MPs a few days later that talks were ongoing ahead of a looming March deadline that will trigger a hike in tariffs for UK car makers. Asked in the comments on January 29th how she plans to avoid a UK tariff war, Ms. Badenoch said she wanted to state explicitly that talks have not broken down. The business secretary said the two sides have an ongoing rules of origin discussion in relation to the car tariffs and they are also having multiple discussions with Canada on cheese. But this has been disputed by Canada in a letter to the Commons Business Committee dated February 16th. Mr. Goodale wrote that he is disappointed with a unilateral pause in these negotiations. As far as I am aware, since the UK announced its pause on January 25th, there have been neither negotiations nor technical discussions with respect to any of the outstanding issues, including British access to Canada's tariff rate quotas for cheese and the approaching expiry of accumulation provisions respecting rules of origin. And Liam Byrne, the chair of the business committee, is now demanding Ms. Badenoch correct the record. It is essential the secretary now explains why the Canadian's account of the talks is so utterly at variance with what she told the House of Commons. That's what the Labour MP told the Financial Times. Sharing the letter in a post on X, he added that without doubt there are now some questions to answer. The UK and Canada have been holding talks on a post-Brexit trade deal for the past two years, while widely continuing to trade on EU terms in the interim. This has allowed the UK to continue selling its cheese products without facing an import tax, which has caused anger among Canadian farmers. The agriculture sector also wants the UK to relax its bans on hormone-treated beef, but ministers are yet to move. A time-limited agreement had also allowed the UK to continue to sell cars without import uh, taxes or high import taxes, but given the negotiations have paused, this is now in doubt, with the terms due to expire at the end of March. And if you want to know more, the next video is right here on the end screen. I'll see you there.
I'll be back.